avoid it. Uh, uh, did you hear what I said? Avoid it because in the process of washing your pants or your trouser, there might be a point where she sees the middle of the trouser. And then the thought will start coming. What is it that normally rests in this place?
If you are there, let's read it together. Just read your own version. Yes. Proverbs 19, verse 3. One to go.
to write in my presence. I said, do I know him? He said, yes, that he is the one that used to help me say, LCS daily drive in their church. <laughs> so I said, okay, give me his number. I called. Bro, how are you? He said, it's fine. He said, I want to see you in my office. He said, it's okay, sir, I'm coming. You know the next thing? The ladies on run. He asked me, where are you? The lady said, she was in my office. God, bro. But you see, my own concern was, these sinners can be very smart. Then the guy threw his chair closer to me and said, actually, he is thinking about it. He is thinking about it. I wanted him to answer in her presence. That he is still thinking about people of God. I'm happy that stupid things have been addressed and mentioned a lot. And I pray that we will be very careful. One sent me a text. He said, Sir, is this one also a sin? He said, Every time I visit the brother, the text started like this. He said, I'm in a relationship. We are all born again. Every time I visit him, he will say that the thing is charging. I should play with it to cool down. So I will play with it to release pants. Is it also a sin? First question. When they play with the thing, does it used to cool down? <laughs> Hello, are you with me? My second question was, she said, every time I visit him, that means this is our beloved sister went to that house, played with a man's penis, went second day, went third day, that he shared testimony that every time I visit him. I just pray that such sisters I How is my So I don't talk strange and speak to my culture or talk my I replied to her was simple. I said, Sister, you are playing with a snake. It will soon bite you. Bro, the thing don't resemble snake. <laughs> so you are playing with a snake. It will soon bite you. If you were to hear the shameful things church people did, Church people. A sister sat on my table and said, Pray for me, sir. Say, What is the prayer? That uh, she is afraid that she has contacted her child. Say, Why do you suddenly think you have contacted her child? That she visited her. Is it fear or fear? The guy that I want to say you want to marry her. When he visited the guy, suddenly the guy took her to his friend's place. The friend disappeared, remaining two of them. One thing led to the other. But the summary was that the guy slept with her. And he said, This is the reason for the prayer now. You see, when you are a man of God, you are in trouble, you pray a lot of prayers. <laughs> <laughs> the problem now is that he said she closed her eyes. When she opened her eyes, she discovered that the corner tore. The guy had convinced her that he would use corner. So she had quit. But she said she closed her I don't know why she closed her eyes. Anyway. But she said she closed her eyes. When she opened her eyes, the corner was torn. So she's afraid. 
afraid that she has contacted HIV. So I looked at her. Her name was Puna Rima. I said, Puna Rima, I never knew you were very stupid like this. So she was shocked. I said, why I say you are stupid is that it looks to me like if it was only the sin, you were ready to manage it. It's the HIV you are afraid of. So I asked her, sin and HIV, which one is more dangerous? In fact, one lady wrote to me and said, Sir, I am 23 years. I've never even had a boyfriend. She said, But my heart is very dirty. I imagine so many things. The Bible is saying, Don't let even your heart be overwhelmed with lust. Do you know 
know that some of the girls you meet on campus casually, where do you know them? Some have slept with politicians on graves of dead men. Then you came and you are feeling like a big boy that you just spoke to her simple and she accepted to sleep with you. It's a prostitute. And it's your life is going after. Verse 27. Are you there? Can a man embrace fire? And his clothes will not be burnt. Young man, come. You are on campus, so you must have been seeing those things. You are passing in a campus. You just see a young man being a girl to the wall. They be a girl to the wall. The Bible says, Can you embrace fire? And go free. What you are holding is fire. If you want to be smiling, very soon you will taste times to start boring. So, this is charcoal. You carried it and you put it inside your bosom and you covered it and you are smiling. Until the thing chops your stomach. Can you embrace fire and you will not be burned? Can you walk on hot coals and your feet do not be saved? Let's move to chapter 7. Somebody there? Verse 24. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children. Pay attention to the words of my mouth. That the book of wisdom kept addressing the young men. Are you not seeing it? Eh? Say, my sons, listen. Pay attention to the words of my mouth, 25. Don't let your heart turn aside to her ways. Don't stray into her paths. Next. For she has brought down to death many of her victims. You will soon be the next one. Her house. Hello. All oh, brothers, three questions, seven out. version is too gentle. There's a version that says, <laughs> huh? There's a version that says that her house, the road to her house, is the path to her. Eh? I like this one, keep tense. Because some of you may not understand what she will mean. You may be thinking it's a party hall. <laughs> her. So anytime you dress, Put perfume and start showing that direction. Where are you heading to? May God help us. Now, three announcements I want to make on that matter so that I can. I, it's very clear I don't have enough time, so I'm not. But I want you to take this announcement very strong. And those of you that care to have a daughter, note it down. The first announcement is that it is possible for a young man, a young woman, to stay away from sexual immorality the day he or she gets married. Let me tell you, let me say it is possible. The Bible says, with men, it's difficult. 
For with God, all things are what possible. Matthew 19, verse 26. It is possible. Don't give up. Some people are giving up. It is possible. Second announcement is this. There are young men and young ladies who are living pure, who are keeping themselves. Are you wrong? Huh? So you see people, at the age of 18, they are slept with 20 people and they keep saying, hey, this is difficult, nobody, everybody, it's not true! There are still sisters, 34 years, no useless man has ever seen their parents. They are waiting for the day of wedding. The third announcement is the fact that no matter how far you have gone into immorality, Jesus can claim you and restore you. Oh, you know what I said? I was preaching in this school. And after the program, one beautiful sister called me here and said, Sir, you are not, you don't know what some of us have done. That's why you are saying this thing is very simple. That this thing is not, I said, young woman, what you have done is not the matter. Jesus is ever willing to grace you. Are you getting it? Wash you and use you. If we just finish Christmas, those of you that read the Christmas passages, you would have noticed that one of the grandmothers of Jesus was a harlot. That is how God works. He forgives you. Smart classes for three years. Finished his baptismal classes, went for baptismal interview for one week conference. His church used to do a one week conference for baptismal interview. The day of baptism, he took his first holy communion and was happy that at last he may be free from women. But as they just finished Holy Communion, people were greeting each other. All of them were in white. One of the girls that was also baptized that day walked to him and said, uh, My place is very far. I can't go back home today. <laughs> <laughs> so, this my baptized brother got a free woman on the day of his baptism. Another brand baptized lady. So the guy woke up the next morning and concluded that these things are not working. I assure you, the power of God is real. We have experienced it. We're not talking hearsay. I went to university. Five years I spent on the campus. All the eyelashes they are talking about, all the jembaki and all of that. The closest a lady came close to me was I was sitting in the class reading. In my father, you know, a one new student came and covered my eyes so that I should get pushed from the fingers and could sense it was a gay. So I was wondering when I turned and this person was the one, it took me two weeks to recover. <laughs> I was like, so, you know, my point, I was not troubled with how, my problem with my 
myself. I said, have I become so casual that gays are doing boji boji with me to that level? <laughs> May God help us in Jesus' name. So a lot of foolishness is going on. And I'm happy that those matters are being discussed. And they will continue tomorrow. So I want to take a smarter one now. To rather mention three things. Very vital. Then we'll pray. Since the stupid issues are being discussed, you will still hear more tomorrow. I don't want to belabor that again. I hope we're together. So, but how do young people survive? The first Thing I want to say, I say I'll say three things. The first one is this: build a consistent intimacy with God. Have you gotten that? Build what? A consistent intimacy with God. John chapter ten, verse four. The Bible says, "My sheep hear my voice." And when they hear my voice, they know they are my sheep. Jesus says that they are his own sheep. They know him. They follow him. The confusion we are having in church, all of I don't know who to marry, all of this, is because children of God cannot hear the shepherd. They are spiritually dead. Can you hear from God? So all the confusion of marrying wrongly and all of that is a big matter. How will I know the right man to marry? How will I know the right woman? It's because you are not hearing from God. I love what our mother to be said. He said, if you have clearly heard that this is your wife, Children. Are you smarter than God? That God will say, This is your wife. Then you say, Father, how many children will she for? <laughs> Who even told you that God wants you to have an expert children? Who says so? He's God. If He chooses that, and I think I don't have time to stress that, but I want to say this here very fast. This pressure of children in marriages is becoming overblotted. The original purpose of marriage was for intimacy, togetherness, partnership in doing the purpose of God. Not necessarily children. Hello. So what I'm trying to say, let me not miss my own point. My point is that if you build intimacy consistently with the Lord, I'm here with my last one. She's seven years. She doesn't miss my voice. At me, I traveled. And I came back and I reached the house. And maybe she's in the house. And she heard my voice. She doesn't need to ask. She simply screams, Daddy is back. From the void, she knows that is her father. In fact, let's say we, uh, we went to church and I came late. She didn't know I was in church. And then I coughed behind. <laughs> and she heard. She will know her father is around. From, are there anybody like that? You hear your father's cough, you know he's the one. Is there anybody like that? Except you didn't grow with your father. Except you didn't grow with your father. When your father, in fact, somebody say, husband and wife, if, <laughs> if your husband knock and say, who is that? It's even an answer. You should have even gotten used to his steps and all of that. 
It's not as if my daughter was giving lecture. How to know your daddy's voice? Did they give her lecture? No! How did she know my daughter? Since she was born, I'm carrying her. I said, say wait. Even when she can't talk, you are calling her, say wait. You are talking with her. It's entering her subconscious. She gets used to your voice. I don't know what you're saying. So if as a child of God, you were intimate with Jesus, every day you are communicating with God, you become used to the Lord. To the point that you got up to travel and God said, don't travel. You heard it. You wanted to go somewhere and God said, don't go there, my daughter. You are enjoying his word out of the intimacy that has been built, not just about marriage, even for work. You know that even Christians now, they graduate, they are ready to work even in beer parlor. Anywhere. Ah, you are a child of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Let's build intimacy. I heard the story of a man in Lagos who was doing two jobs. So every day he gets home around 11. He leaves house by 4 a.m. So one day there was a problem. There's a no movement. And then he was trapped at home. He wanted to carry his daughter to get around the world. He was a stranger in his house. That's the kind of problem Christians are having. You say you're a child of God, yet heaven doesn't know you. They don't see you. You are very scarce from the throne. So you can't hear from God. You don't even have the stamina to say no to temptations. Hebrews 4, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4. Is somebody in Hebrews now? Chapter 4. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Brethren, are you following me at all? All this communication they are talking about is not as if the people don't know that it is wrong. They lack the power to say no. This girl that was crying in Barclay, boy, the boy knocks and he opens, is lack of power to say no. For instance, even this one that carries school fees and gave a boy or gave a game, do you think he didn't know that it was a risky game? But he didn't have the power. The Bible says, let us come to the throne where you will obtain mercy and receive grace that will help you in time of need. And I think I need to stress for that that coming to the throne of grace does not only help you to make heaven. It helps you through the journey of life. The road is very rough. You can't survive on your own. But if you become regular, building your intimacy with the King of Kings, He will address your matter. Every matter at all. I don't know what you're following what I'm saying. I think one person that understood that very well was Queen Esther. You remember Queen Esther? There was a death sentence hanging on them. But Queen Esther knew that the simple solution is to be close to the king. If you build intimacy with the king, the king will know what to do. So Esther, Esther did! 
King's office will talk invitation. Your life is at risk. The king said, there must be a special reason for this risk. So the king said, my wife, what is the matter? Up to half of the kingdom I will give you. Do you remember that? Imagine that. Uh, come. Pastor. Imagine this young man stood before Buhari. And Buhari said, I can divide Nigeria into two and give her. Either you take the desert or you take the oil side. Choose one. <laughs> And then, please, I don't want you to miss this thing you know, It's a very serious principle that Christians don't know. The queen said, Your Lordship, I just want you to come tomorrow and eat food in my chamber. Huh. The queen knew that if the king became intimate with you, every matter would be happened. Stupid. 
that at least she would have collected compensation card. But she said, let her try. The first, first time she entered, made the manager. I couldn't wait for the rest of the story. He just told her, they didn't even have the post read on. The manager only apologized that they don't have a decent accommodation, but they will be giving her monthly allowance for the accommodation. And then they show her debts. That is the power of a man's name, but only in first bank. Perhaps if you call that name in second bank, they will call security to take you out. <laughs> Hello, are you following what I'm saying? Those of you that remember the year Yeragua died, you know, Yeragua was around till December. He went for her treatment, never came back till May. I was just imagining that someone met Yeragua. 1st of December, and here I know I said, we are working on budget, so I will slot your name January in the program. Won't you go and do Thanksgiving in your church? Only to hear two days after that he was then rushed to hospital. Then he waited till they brought back him lifeless and he died. That is how human beings limited. But even at that, human beings have strong, that's what, like campaign now. You will see somebody put a big poster of a tip, then put his own small poster. I hope you know what he's going to say. Me and I. God speaks to his children. I hear you. It's because we are not into it. But let me say this, sister. Oh, anybody that loves you by now is praying that at the right time you will get married. Praise the Lord. You get married. And sometimes, if you are blessed, that night of wedding, the key enters. Do you know what that means? It means that sometimes a lady gets married, and the next eight years of her life, she's not herself. Nine months pregnancy, 18 months breastfeeding, that is already two years of road. Then, once another spark baby enters again, Another cycle begins. Nine months pregnant. During those nine months, even when they are announcing fasting in the church, this zealous sister, she would just say, nah, see, I'm not taking care of you. <laughs> I don't know why you know what I'm saying. This sister that used to be on fire for Jesus, so her, for now, she said, God understands. Then you are breastfeeding. Even when you are doing quiet time, and the baby screams, just say, Father, let's pause, I'll come back later. <laughs> so imagine that this sister, now that she's single, she didn't build intimacy with Jesus. Then she gets married. Then she's empty. Church. 
They are answerable to nobody. After all, they are speaking in tongues. So what do they need again? No! You need someone to vent your life. It hurts. So let me tell you, a brother in this school now came and showed Reverend one sister and they prayed about you, they started a relationship. Then the brother arrived at NYFC in Ogun State and meet one Yoruba lady there, a brother, who speaks in tongues like a brother. Then the brother said, God! This one will take me to the government and very good. Then he decides to forgo the one they made to his passion. I hope you know the first thing that will come to his mind. What will he tell her? I have registered Sister Helene for her. Now that I'm getting attracted to Salome, how do I delete that? That alone cautions you. But brothers who are pastors, they can propose four sisters to one people. <laughs> Just a text message. Send to four of them. And leave them one room. They are not answerable to anybody. No wonder they run into spiritual aspects. It's not go far. There should be someone checking your life. And do you know that one of the reasons why sports is getting the attention of the whole world is that every serious sportsman has a coach. Whether you are the best footballer in the world, some of those boys, if you calculate their salary on your calculator, your calculator will run for you. Tell me, that your salary, that's my level. Your calculator will not be able to tell you. If you don't want to show you, you can show you one scientific figure. <laughs> but they have someone that tells them that 5 a.m., no matter the weather, they must come out. And they have no option. 5 a.m., they are there standing. He can come here and say, You don't be moving to the other side and between your hands. <laughs> you cannot get angry and say, Sir, I want to play ball. Hey, you must do what the coach says. In fact, there was one, one African player that was playing one of his clubs, doing very well. So one match, the coach left him on the bench. They were, being, they were losing the match. Two minutes to the end of the match, the coach pointed at him to enter. He refused to enter. The whole world of football turned against him. How dare you? In fact, for six weeks, they didn't say this shit again. How dare you dare? What? No! But spiritually now, everybody is an emperor of it. No wonder there's confusion. If we have people we are answerable to, and you, you are consulted because some of you, I need to emphasize this. Some of you claim to ask me to go by name. You don't discuss with them. Then you say, Mama, Mama, hey, it's not by calling. There should be an openness. I don't know where you're going on the Open up! I'm interested in the Navy. If I remember one missionary. Wrote me a letter, four pages full stack, trying to explain about this. So, you know, may God help us in the name of Jesus. I hope you are following me. Get a spiritual coach, it will help you. We are both some spirit things. Then, finally, I said three, go. Finally, sorry. Need to be born again. Your dad looks very simple now, but we are painfully discovering that several of us running around the church are not yet born again. The angle that what does me most is that? Please! You can't hear me from now! Ah! If you can get it to 
right here. Most of these questions will be answered. Who should I marry? Which one should I do? Should I relate to this one? Which one dealing with you intimately with all that every step of your life? I pray God will give you an answer to Jesus. Number two. I said three things, so let me go to number two now. Are you with me? What was number one? Build a consistent, intimate. It should be consistent. Or, I know as we talk now, tomorrow someone you will read Bible. Next tomorrow you will try. After that, you will forget. Hey! It should be consistent and intimate. One sister said, anytime she wake up, she used to play gospel hymns. Gospel hymns. So you play gospel hymns and you are cooking. Spend time meaningful to care for the Lord. I said number two. Get a spiritual coach. Get what? Get a what? Hello. Get a spiritual coach. One of the reasons that several Christians are doing a lot of stupid things is that. They are nobody checking what they are doing. I hope you all listen to me. Sisters, have people in your life that when a man starts disturbing you, you consult. They pray with you. Let them check. So let's say, uh, Sister, come. This is our family sister. She's happy. They can be very active in church. And they are very active in sin. Nobody knows. The pastor respects them. They fall as soon as they come to the young man. Not knowing that he's living in sin. No man. Very active in church. Very active in sin. And nobody catches them. What? Smart sinners. You know my problem? You think that the sinner knows? Twenty ninth of June, twenty thirteen. I was preaching in College of Education in Bill like this in Borough State. When the fellowship finished, Esco, let's eat. Then the treasurer went out to buy water for me. She came back crying. She said, What's the matter? As she went out her phone, she saw almost 42 missed calls. She called and told her that your father just died. So what happened? They were in church like we are now. Boko Haram just surrounded the church. And we shoot it sporadically. Everybody running their own way. The unlucky ones, the bullets led them. Her father was one of them. In the morning, the next day, Monday morning, they found the corpse of the pastor too in the bush. Where he fell. He bled till he died there. Why am I telling you that story? That Monday morning, news we carried. Imagine that it happens here as we are sitting now. That they surround you. I know some of you have said, God forbid. What if you didn't forbid? <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't forbid, though. It has happened. If I don't know you know what happened in BUK, Canada. FCA students were meeting for the book on and came shooting. We buried two FCS officials there. If God didn't forbid and it happened, tomorrow morning, newspaper will carry it. 27 Christian faithfuls died while worshiping in a school in Plato State. And then there will be confusion in heaven. Heaven will say, we want to receive four people here.
Newspaper said 27 Christian fighters were killed in Washington. But heaven was only so far. How do you You are not stealing us now. That you sing him as if he wants to be dead, but you sing himself. Today, somebody may be choosing to say, Jesus, I want to start a new journey with you. Jesus, I need help. I'm struggling. My heart is dirty. I've been doing very dirty things secretly. Lord, I need help. Jesus, help me. The Bible says, as many as received him, he gave them power to become his children. Somebody will receive that power this morning. The power that will teach you to say no to sin. Talk to God. Confess to him. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Father. Gently your right hand on your chest so that I pray with you. Wherever you are sitting, your right hand on your chest. I say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus. I will give you 30 seconds to specifically tell the Lord. Say, Father, I've been telling lies. I've been sleeping with the guy that said he wants to marry me. I am sorry. Forgive me. Tell him, Lord, he's specific. Tell him, he's willing to forgive you. Say, if you cry to me, I will forgive you. I will wash you. I will cleanse you. Jesus is willing to wash you. You have done a portion today, Lord. That's why he said his blood. To cleanse you! Talk to Jesus. I want to pray with those that are very serious with that decision. So if you are very serious about it, show it by kneeling down where you are, while I invite my wife to come and commit you to God. Gently kneel down with the hand on your chest, just kneel down, we we'll come and pray for you. Lord, as many of you that are living down right now, I 
committed to go and reform us. We are all saved for the grace of God that teach us to say no to ungodliness and unrighteousness. For to live godly and righteousness, that grace has appeared to us. Nor I ask for such grace of God and life right now. Let that grace be given to each and every one of such rich money in the name of Jesus. Father, help them from henceforth that that which have held them bound, that which have struggled with for long, let them be set free from me today in the name of Jesus. Henceforth, the power to live right, the power to do what is right, let it be bestowed upon them. Whatever they have done before, you will forgive them. You curse them and wash them. And for henceforth, you give them the grace to be right. Thank you for your beautiful Jesus. All that you need to do for them to be close to you, to be consistent with you, to be intimate with you. Father, let such be given to them this morning. Thank you because you know you will do it for them. Be that resulted for for Jesus' precious name and Um, Those who pray that prayer would love to be praying along with you. So I will give some forms to wash us. The moment that we feel you can't handle the people who feel it, we will be praying for you. God bless you. Please, now we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Single but not stupid. Thank you so much, sir, for allowing God to use you to bring His word and to bless our lives. Our prayer is that God Almighty will refresh you, will reveal you, and equip you for greater works of service in His kingdom in the name of Jesus. Um, I will do two things. Number one, he came with some material. Of course, if you can take intimacy with God, sometimes you will need something that will keep you busy in that moment. There is daily guide for your daily devotion. For adults, daily guide is 800 now. It's a devotional material for the whole year. It's very, very important. This is what we use in my family altar alongside other devotionals. 800 naira. In the spirit of God. Yes. Wow. So in the spirit of love, if you have 500, it's written here, 800 naira. But he's saying, if you have 500 naira, you have a problem. Yes. Then for our children, there is daily milk, also an FCS production for our children's daily devotion. Please, if you have children that are readable and that can read, it's important that you get this for them also to help them in their building of intimacy with God. Daily milk is 700. So in the spirit of love. <laughs> So for daily meal, in the spirit of love, bring 700 naira. Did you say five? Oh, five too. Wow, this is beautiful. Then our speaker is also an author of so many books. One of the rich, rich, rich books that he has authored is Single but Not Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He's an author of this material and is so rich to give young people with different principles for healthy and godly relationship that will lead to tears free marriages. How much is it? 409. Single but not stupid. I beg you get a copy of this material. It will help you to develop your relationship, develop your life. Uh, with so many materials that they came with materials, at the end of the service, uh, money will be displaying on the table, um, right on this exit, you get the ones that will be very, very important for your life. Um, of 
Okay, yes. Again, the issue of coaching cannot be overemphasized. So those of you that make decisions, please do join the discipleship class on Wednesdays by 6 30 p.m. at the Sunday School session. The Lord will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. This is the first aspect of the things I'm going to have done. The second aspect is I feel led like that this is a fertile ground on which to serve. I would want us to support this missionary. While he was in Yobe area, in the heat of Boko Haram, the Lord used him severally. And uh, he has been advancing the team. You know, this is not my regular way of doing things. But please, if you feel that you want to sow and bless this missionary, uh, can we have an offering back? Please will share the grace, whatever you want to sow in their lives, drop in and then we leave. The Lord will bless you for doing so in the name of Jesus. He's married to Mordecai Faithful, uh, Benjamin, and they are blessed with four beautiful children. Let's rise as we share the grace together. Don't forget, tomorrow we are continuing with single but not stupid. What time? 5 p.m. We are pleaded with lightness and LCS to please um, collapse their prayer meetings for tomorrow so that all of us will be here. Invite your friends, invite your classmates, invite your hostel mates. Tomorrow's couples are red and why? Corporate for, for guys and then Tina Grant for and we did what is it tomorrow there is going to be a feast. Prepare something you will share with at least two people. By the Holy Holy, by the Wara. And uh, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Give somebody a high five of not a stupid young man.